Yep. All right, so let's get started. So as you know, as we get going, we're going to be recording tonight's program. So remember, you're going to be live on Facebook now. You can go back and watch yourself after we finish the program. So we're going to get started tonight, as we always do. Um, Miss Olivia is going to work on the microphones, and she will help mute things and that sort of thing. So we'll remind everybody who we are. I'm Miss Denise. It's so good to see everybody. I'm Miss Annette. Welcome aboard. <laughs> I miss Toby. I'm not on camera tonight, but I'm here. <laughs> and then I miss Olivia. So we are very happy to have everybody with us. So well, let's get started because the very first thing that we always start out doing is we start with our story time song. So is everybody ready? Here we go. If you're ready for a story, come sit down. If you're ready for a story, come sit down. Let's all gather near so everyone can hear. If you're ready for a story, come sit down. Yay! <clears throat> so we are so glad to have everybody. Tonight's program is all about the land of make-believe. So what kind of things do you think might be in land of make-believe? Meow Meow's got her outfit on. What do you think she's make-believing that she is? Do you see her wings and her magic wand? So I'd say she must be a fairy, right? So there are other things that we're going to be talking about tonight that are from the land of make-believe. And one of those is, who can see what this book's about? <gasps> it's dragons! So we're going to be reading several stories tonight about dragons as well, because dragons are make-believe. And we're also going to talk about all kinds of imaginary beings in a couple of our stories. And... When we talk about land of make-believe, the stories are usually stories that somebody's made up and they start out with all kinds of magical creatures and, and things that happen and places that are made up as well. Um, and most of them usually have a happy ending. So we like the happy ending parts. So, um, and a lot of times stories, when we talk about land of make-believe, they start with once upon a time. Has anybody ever heard a story start with once upon a time? Give us a thumbs up if you've heard once upon a time. Yes, indeed, indeed. So we're going to get started with our very first book tonight, and it is about a knight. So, hmm, what is a knight? Does anybody know what a knight is? Is it somebody who lived in medieval times, right, and wore armor? So this story is about a knight. So Miss Olivia is going what is it, Will? Well, we need to type the book. Need to type the book. Okay, well, after you finish, you'll be able to get the titles, right? I think he's also reminding us of the secret code, too. That, yeah. too. We'll get that for you as well. <laughs> so, Okay, okay. so Miss Olivia is going to read to you now, and this is called Take Care, Good Night. So, Miss Olivia? This is, of course, Take Care, Good Night by Shelley Moore Thomas, illustrated by Paul Meisel, and then published by Dutton Children's Books. Once there were three little dragons. They lived in a deep, dark cave that was in the king's forest. But the dragons were very happy in their cave. They had a good friend. He was called the Good Knight. Every day he rode his horse, clippity-clop, clippity-clop, to the dragon's cave to say, Good morning, good dragons. Good morning, good knight, replied the dragons. Every night, he rode his horse, clippity-clop, clippity-clop, to put the little dragons to bed. Good night, good night, the little dragons said before they went to sleep. One day, after the good knight had ridden off on his horse, on his horse, clippity-clop, the little dragons heard a knock on their door. It was another friend, the old, old wizard. Good day, little dragons. I was wondering... If you would help me, the old wizard said. We will try, said the dragons. I would like you to watch my cats while I go away for a few days. Can you do it? The dragons had never watched cats before, but the good knight had taught them that it was good to do good deeds. Certainly, we will help you, said the dragons. The old, old wizard was very happy. He told the dragons that he would leave a note with instructions at his cottage. 
he left them the shiny silver key to his door. Take care. Good dragons, he said. And then he disappeared in a puff of smoke. This is going to be fun, said the first dragon. I can hardly wait, said the second dragon. Yippee, said the third dragon. The next day, the dragons went to the wizard's cottage to take care of the cats. They opened the door with the shiny silver key. They saw lots of cats. They found the wizard's note on the counter. There was only one problem. The dragons didn't know how to read. Oh boy. It says, give the cats fresh water, give the cats food from the cupboard, and put the cats to sleep in their beds at night. The dragons don't know that. Oh boy. I think the first thing we're supposed to do is take the cats swimming in the lake, said the first dragon. So the dragons gathered up the cats and took them to the lake for a swim. Oh boy, that's, that's not good. Just then, the good knight was riding by on his horse. Good day, good dragons, said the good knight. What are you doing? We are, talk we are taking the wizard's cats for a swim, said the dragons. He told us to. Cats swimming? That did not seem right. But if the old wizard said so, it must be true. Very well, said the good knight. Carry on. But the cats did not like swimming. They did not like it one bit. They howled and yowled. They quivered and shivered until... Until what? I don't know. <laughs> Just then... Oh. Oh. The little dragons took them home. Then the little dragons looked at the wizard's note to see what to do next. I think it says put the cats in the cupboard, said the second dragon. So the dragons put the cats in the cupboard. Just then the good knight was riding by. What are you doing? asked the good knight. We are putting the wizard's cats in the cupboard. He told us to. Cats in the cupboard? That did not seem right. But if the old wizard said so, it must be true. Very well, said the good knight. Carry on. But the cats did not like being in the cupboard. They did not like it one bit. They scritched and scratched until the little dragons let them out. By then, the cats were very thirsty and very hungry. And so were the little dragons. But they looked at the note once more. I think now we're supposed to take the cats camping, said the third <laughs> dragon. So the dragons took the cats out camping under the stars. What are you doing? asked the good knight, who was coming to bring the dragons back to their cave. We are taking the cats out camping, said the dragons. The old wizard told us to. Cats camping? That did not seem right. But if the wizard said so, it must be true. Very well, said the good knight. Carry on. Cats did not like camping. They did not like it one bit. They jumped and bumped, they clawed and pawed, they cussed and fussed and hissed. They would not even eat one toasted marshmallow. I can't even imagine a cat not liking toasted marshmallows. The good knight could not help but hear all the racket the cats were making. Oh, this doesn't seem right, he thought. Back he rode to the wizard's house, clippity-clop. Follow me, good dragons, he said. Let us get to the bottom of this and bring those cats. Oh. I lost the screen. I'm still sharing. It should still be there. Let me see. It, it's still there. Is All it right. still there? It's just you, Olivia. Okay, yeah. There we go. I fixed it. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Inside the wizard's house, the good knight found 
the wizard's note. It did not say to take the... I have to get this out of the way. It did not say to take the cat swimming. It did not say um. to, to put the cats in the cupboard or take them camping. Didn't you read this note? He asked. The dragons hung their head, their eyes filled with drippy, droppy tears. We told them we would take care, but we don't know how to read, they confessed. So the good knight read the note to the dragons. Um, sorry. It's fine. First, they gave the cats water. Then they fed the cats food from the cupboard. And they put the cats in their beds to sleep. By then, the dragons were very tired themselves. The good knight wa walked them back to their cave and tucked them in for the night. The next day, the wizard came back from his trip. He visited the dragons. Thank you for watching my cats, he said. You did such a good job. I wanted you to have this. Sorry, the, the slide's in the way. He handed them a tiny baby kitten of their own. And I wanted you to have this, said the good knight. He handed a book to the dragons. It was a book about learning to read. Ah, oh, so they're going to learn to read after <laughs> all. Yay. Very good. Sorry about So we're going to talk now about knights that were in the book. So Miss Annette has one of the most amazing things to show everybody that she made herself. So who's ready to see it? <gasps> Here we go. <gasps> oh, my goodness. We need to put her on the big screen so everybody can see her. Wow. Look at that, Miss Annette. Isn't it beautiful? <gasps> her knight's nice helmet. Uh-huh. Do you want to tell them how you made it, Miss Annette? I used cardboard in last week. Can, can you all hear me through this? Yep, we can yes. see you. Um, last week, our teaser was aluminum foil, so I took a cardboard piece of cardboard and I covered it with aluminum foil and made a circle so that it would fit over my head. And I cut strips in there so that I could see it. And this is part of the shield that would go up and down. And then look at the top on the top so I could be fancy and get ready for the tournaments. Yes, indeed. That is beautiful. So Miss Annette is our knight in shining armor tonight. So we are going to talk a little bit about knights, which we talked about. Knights were actually real people, right? It looks like Will has a question. Will, you have a question? He has to unmute himself. You have to unmute yourself. What's the book called that you read? We read Take Care, Good Night. At, at the very end, uh, we will also um, put the book's titles in the um, chat. Yep. Okay. So with our knights, we're going to have a little, a little session here, and we're going to find out if people put their thumbs up, it means that, that's, that they think that's true, or thumbs down means that they think it's not true. I see Addie on the screen, but there's not enough light in the room, Addie. We can't see you very well. Can you turn on a brighter light so we can see you? Okay, so we're gonna ask questions about the knights that used to be in medieval times, right? Which medieval we talked about being a long, long time ago, right? So, Knights need help getting on their horses when they have their armor on. So she'd have on armor on her head and her whole body. So do you think that she would need help getting onto her horse? Give us a thumbs up if you think that's true or a thumbs down if you think that's false. So would a knight need to have help getting on her horse? Do you think that'd be a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Okay, the answer is Annette. Thumbs up, right? Because the horse 
Mm -hmm. There was what was called a squire, which was a knight in training who would help the knight get all dressed in the armor and then get him onto his horse and then hand him his shield, right? He had a shield that he would use as well. Okay, so the knights, here's the next question. What's, what's true? Thumbs up. False is thumbs down, right? So knights promised to serve the king's army for 40 days every year without pay. Hmm, so they did it for 40 days a year, but they didn't get paid. So would that be a thumbs up if you think that's true, or is that a thumbs down if you think it's false? So would Miss Annette have worked for 40 days a year without getting paid? Miss Annette, what's the answer? True. Yes, it is true. That was I what knights did for I their king. I pledge allegiance to the king, and that was part of it. Yep, absolutely. So here's the next question. Are we ready? You could not see a knight's face when he had his armor on. How would people recognize him? By the feather on his helmet? Can you see the feather, the feather on top of Miss Annette's helmet? <gasps> there it is. Would that be the way you would tell? Or by the coat of arms that was painted on his shield? So what do you think? Would it be the feather or the coat of arms? Feather or coat of arms? So what do you think it is? Miss Annette, give us the answer. It was the coat of arms. You want to tell us a little bit about the coat of arms? Well, usually it had all of, it was called a crest for the families. And the family that you were born into had special figures that represented your family. And those were all painted on your coat of arms so that people would know which family you were from. Right. Good. Okay, so here's the next question. There is a plant called dragon's breath because knights fought with dragons, right? So is that true or is that false? We think that's true. Dragon's breath, true or false? I see a false, but I don't see one. Sarah, what do you think? Sarah, Addy, what do you think? Is it true? Okay, true. So let's see, Miss Annette. It's a thumbs up. It's true. <laughs> So she actually has one there to show you. Can you all see it? it yeah. Kind of looks like the breath that would come out of a dragon if you had it sideways like this. Yep. Yep. That is so pretty. Very, you very can pretty. Get them at Lowe's. <laughs> Lowe's has them. Yes. Okay. So um, the real name is Celosia, and it's from the Greek word burning, and it's also known as coxcomb in the amaranth family of flowers. Okay. So, did all dragons live in caves? Was that true? Did they all live in caves? Or was that false? So, did all dragons live in caves? Give us your answer. True or false? Did all dragons live in caves? Miss Annette? No. So, dragons sometimes lived on tops of mountains or in lakes. So, sometimes they were out in the middle of water or lakes. Okay, here's another question about dragons. All dragons blow fire. You know how they show fire breathing dragons? Is it all dragons would be yes? Or if they didn't, let's see, false. Okay, so did all dragons blow fire? Put your thumb up if you think that's true. If you don't think it's true, give us a thumbs down. I see some thumbs up. So Miss Annette, what's the answer? Oh! <gasps> You want to tell us what what else about dragons? Some of them lived in real cold climates and regions, and they blew ice instead of fire. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and then here's the last one. It's a dragon's tooth was believed to be good luck. You know, you find shark's tooth at the ocean. So would dragon's teeth be considered good luck? Would that be true? Or would that be false? Would a dragon's tooth be considered good luck? What do you think your answer is? What do you think? Show us your answer. Is that a thumbs up for true? Oh, you think it's a false, huh? All right, Miss Annette. Is it true or false? <gasps> true. Back when the knights were living, they always thought that that was good luck if you could have a dragon's tooth. That is correct. Very good. So Miss Annette's going to take off her night helmet now. Yes, and Miss Toby's going to bring up two pictures of the knight and the horse. Yes. 
This is what the knight looked like in all of his armor. See, he has it on his legs to protect him against other horses hitting up against him if he's on his horse. He had his weapons, and we talked about his coat of armor. That's on his shield there. And then this is a different type of helmet that he had on. And this is all, and back on the other picture, um, the horse also had on armor to keep it safe during battle too. And um, by the colors that the horse wore, you could also tell who the knight, who, who the horse belonged to. So, and all knights had to have a horse in armor. They had to provide that. The king didn't provide that for them. So they had to come up with a way to find that on their own. So it was an expensive endeavor for them at that time. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, it was. Definitely. Okay. So we have another story for you, and I'm going to read to you. And this story is called Julia's House for Lost Creatures, and it's by Ben Hatke, and it's by First Second Press out of New York. So are we ready for a story? Here we go. All right. Julia's house came to town. You see her going down, and she's got her mailbox in her house, and Boom, she puts it right onto the side of the house. So she's moved in and she settled by the sea. That's a wonderful place to be is by the ocean, right? That, that evening there was a warm fire and toast and tea and all the house was quiet, too quiet. Hmm. So Julia ran to her workshop. She got out her tools and her paints and she went to work. She made a sign. Hmm. She hung the sign outside her front door, and it said, Julia's House for Lost Creatures. That sounds like a fun place to be. And then she waited. She didn't have to wait for long. She hears scratch, scratch at the door. <gasps> the sign worked. Patched Up Kitty came to stay, and it was nice to have a friend, even if he didn't like other kitties. Uh-oh. Before long, there was another knock at the door. It went boom, boom, boom. Who's going to be on the other side of that door? It was a very sad troll. The city had torn down his bridge, and he asked if he could please stay, just until he could get back on his feet. Julia had just settled the troll into her best chair when there was another knock. And there were also scrapes and scratches and whines and barks and bellows and bangs. Look at all those creatures outside her door. Soon Julia's house was filling up with lost and homeless creatures of every description. Look at all those trolls and gnomes and porcupines and dragons. They asked for towels and soap. Tea and toast. This sounds like a fun place to be. They even had ideas of their own. They spilled things and they didn't even clean up. And then the troll found Julia's old record player. Stop, shouted Julia. Everybody stop. The creatures stopped what they were doing and stood shuffling their guilty feet. Julia ran to her workshop and closed the door. She stayed in there for a very long time. When she finally came out, Julia had a new sign. Now everyone had a job. Julia's house chore chart. See all the creatures on her sign telling them what they needed to do for chores? Oh my goodness. The dragon made toast for mer and the mermaid washed the dishes. The Foletti tended the fire and the goblins mopped up and the ghost was in charge of dusting and the troll picked out the music. At last, there was a warm fire and tea and toast for everyone and all the house was quiet again, except whoosh of the wind coming through, drip, drip, drip of the water dripping, creaking floors in the house. Look at her laying there listening to all the sounds. So Julia got out of bed and made one more sign. She put it up outside the door, and then she waited. Tap, tap, tap. 
tap, tap, tap. Look at her running to get the door. <gasps> she didn't have to wait very long. <gasps> Look at the creature there with all his little helper baby moles, right? Look at that. The end. Don't they look like they're very happy there? So that was Julia's House by the Sea. So we love that book. Okay. So next up, we are going to talk about our craft for this week. So Miss Annette, you want to share what our craft is? Yes. Last week, our, we uh, showed you that we were going to be using aluminum foil. And Miss, uh, this is the picture that I made of the night using just cutting out the aluminum foil and pasting it to um, a sheet of paper. And here's part of my little feather on the top that I put on there. And this is his uh, lance that he's using. So at the end on our craft page, we will have some different pictures so that you can get some ideas if you would like to make a, a night this week. Also, we talked about rocks, and what we were going to do is make dragon ro uh, rocks. And here's a picture that Miss Toby showed, and this is the head of my dragon right here. Oh my goodness. So he's red, but the rest of his body is out in my yard. I just brought his head in today. So I have a seven rock dragon, out in my flower bed. So if you would like to find some rocks and paint them and make your own outside dragon, you can do that as one of your crafts. So those are our crafts for today. Yes. Yeah. And Miss Annette always tells us what the teaser is for next week, what you're going to be thinking about that we're going to do crafts for for next week. Okay. So what do you have, Miss Annette? So I have an umbrella. Oh my goodness. My umbrella here. It's a big umbrella. It doesn't fit in the picture very well. <laughs> and I have an acorn. Ooh, an acorn. So next week you'll have to find out about the umbrella and the acorn. Oh my, I can hardly yes. wait. So actually, just a reminder to everyone that next week is our passive week because we know a lot of people travel over July 4th holidays and things. So we will actually be doing passive programs, meaning there'll be things on our Facebook page and activities and crafts you can do. But our weekly programs like this will resume in two weeks from tonight. So our next one is July the 7th. So we will look forward to seeing you then. We do want to tell everybody that um, next week, again, the library is still open. We're on restrictions, so you have to wear a mask, and we're limited to 25 people in the library. But you can place books on hold through your library card, and our staff will call you and tell you when your books are ready, and you can drive right through the back window and pick up your books. So it's easy peasy. So And next week, we are the library is actually closed next Friday for the July 4th holiday, okay? So we're going to give everybody the secret code now. Yes. So Miss Toby's going to type it over mm -hmm. in the, the um, chat box. It's in the chat. So the secret code and the name of the two books we read this week are both in the chat box. But our secret code is Land of Make Believe, all capital letters. Okay, Land of Make Believe, all capital letters, all one word. And then if you look in your chat box, you'll see our two books, which were Good Night, Good Night, and Julia's Home for Lost Creatures. Yes, thank things. you so much. And, and then if they are interested in reading about the lives of the real knights back in medieval times, we have a link to Hoopla that they can get that book. So, mm -hmm. Yep, and we'll be posting all that when we post the video on Facebook, yes. and you can also see it in the book portal as well. So, Will, it looks like you have a question. You're going to have to unmute yourself. Well, it's that it's actually that we got another badge. Another what? Badge. On yeah, when page. you get another badge for putting in your secret code, indeed. Yeah, you do. Very, very, very good. So as we finish up, we're going to do our closing song like we do every week. So we're going to sing together. So is everybody ready? Here we go. The more we read together, 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 the more we read together, the happier we'll be. 
for your friends are my friends and my friends are your friends the more we read together the happier we'll be yay and of course we now want everybody to take their mics off of mute because we finish every program with our library cheers so turn off your turn your microphone on and we're gonna get ready as we count to three together and then it's library as loud as we can. So Miss Meow Meow even wants to get in on this one. So is everybody ready? So here we go, let's count together. One, two, three, <laughs> we are so glad everybody came to join us tonight. We hope you had fun. Sarah, Addie, it was good to see you guys. So I'm glad you came tonight. Will, it was good to see you. So we'll look forward to seeing you guys soon. Again, two weeks from tonight is when we'll have our next program, okay? So you guys have a good, good week next week, and we'll look forward to seeing you all very, very soon. So good.